Evening, Mark. Evening. We're a little bit late, aren't we? But uh, that we've won't... had a few issues. Yeah, <coughs> so at least. I mean, that won't matter for the people watching this on YouTube, but uh, for, for for the people watching the live stream, uh, we're sorry that it took us so long to get on. We ran into a few technical issues. Um, but yeah, we should start and start properly. We should. So, so who are you? Who am I? I'm Mark Winteringham, uh, 2-Bit Tester on Twitter, and I am a test automator extraordinaire and toolsmith guru. Exciting. Who are you? Sounds good. I am Richard Bradshaw, Selenium keynote speaker. Ooh. As of Tuesday. Yeah, I had the privilege of keynoting at Selenium on Tuesday at Selenium Conference London, which was epic. Yeah, I think only like 25% of the audience left. I think that was, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's not bad actually. That, no. my, my test my test passed off. I was expecting at least 40. That was good. Yes, so, yeah, it was a very good keynote. So uh, well done on that. Thank you very much. But yeah, no, I had a good time. Uh, but yeah, I... Uh, I'm pretty good on this automation space, but more of a strategist and theorist. And I, I like to dabble in code, but Mark's got better better techers in that space. I am the code monkey. So we're excited for this one, actually, because we have been invited by Source Labs to basically do a little bit of demo of the Source Cloud. Uh, they are really great to automation and testing. I think if we go on um, who supports us, you will see them listed there because there they are. Yeah, They give us uh, access to their cloud in order to run all the um, automated checks for RESTful Booker Platform. They do. Yep. Which is our test playground that we've built to help people learn UI automation, JavaScript automation, API automation, unit testing, Docker, Kubernetes. All the jazz. All and, the all the fashionable things. And if you look on it right now, <laughs> it's got a giant giraffe on it because someone's been having a good old play with it. Look at that. Look at that go. Yeah, I don't know who that is. If you've done this, please tell us because that's... Yes. That's genius. That's but yeah, this is the test one. This is the instance that's hosted online all the time, which is meant to reset itself, isn't it, Mark? Yes, I may have broken the database resetter. Um, <laughs> we'll be looking into that. Hopefully, uh, that'll be fixed soon, though. But yeah, you can uh, go to GitHub and download this and run it locally yourself. Um, always, as we said, deploy it to an instance. But we are going to have a a bit of a look around Source Labs. So Mark, I think you set most of this up, so what can you tell me about it? So yeah, I thought the best thing to do would be to just go for a little run through it. Um, so I've set up like a really, really noddy uh, script. Let's just do a quick awful thread sleep because that's nothing quite like that to make people who use Selenium WebDriver sweat. Um, again, for design choice, um, this isn't something I'd normally do, but yeah, so we've got this little script here that uh, just opens the automation in testing.com website. I don't know, should we put an assertion in? We should probably do that to sort of see it pass or fail within Source Labs, really. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. So, what it's sh simple. Let's do, let's do a traditional text on screen. Oh, a classic. The next training, perhaps. Yeah. Something like that. I fixed that this morning, so it's currently up to date. <laughs> <laughs> it's been out of date for about three weeks. <laughs> um, That's good. Okay, so assert that. Uh, let's do driver dot find element by class name. That'll do. Next training name more. Um, what should we do? Yeah, so we'll do get text. Sure. Get text. Something nice and simple. We're not really yes. demoing Selenium. We don't advise you do many assertions like this, but yeah, it's this, just... is, uh, this will give us something that works or doesn't. Yep, does the job, doesn't it? Okay, cool. Right, so we can remove that now because I don't need to worry about that so much. And then let's see this fail. Because <laughs> probably 
handling sleeps very well. Oh, there we go. Oh, I forgot the colon. Silly me. We'll just do that one more time. Well, you just said you wanted to see it fail when you meant pass, but you're actually showing us fail. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I was trying to be all TDD about it. <laughs> trying to see if I'm watching. I Excellent. Don't know, I don't so know there how we much go. of that so beer you've had to drink. I do. I'm currently drinking a beer that's called Sauce Connery Creek, which, you know, is entertaining. I, I think we should set a gauntlet for you that every time that we do one of these, <laughs> you have to have a pun based beer. Um, and then I'm just going to find more esoteric tools <laughs> for you to work with. Uh, no, that's not a habit I want to get into. <laughs> right. So you just ran that, right? And it, it ran locally. It did. Yep. Um, just just to sort of clarify something, if people are like, um, how did you set the Chrome driver stuff up? Um, I'm actually using WebDriver Manager, um, which is created by Bonnie Garcia. Um, it's a really handy little tool that actually will, I think basically the way it works is it'll look at what my version of Chrome is, and then it will download the net, the, the related Chrome driver to my version of Chrome. And then it sets all the pathing up so that I can just call driver new Chrome driver. So I don't have to do all of the capability stuff. So it's a handy little tool. Uh, Cause I just wanted to make this yeah. as succinct as possible, but yes, onto source labs. So what is it, Mark? So, um, for my knowledge and from my experience with it, it's basically um, uh, an amazing vast open cloud filled with lots of devices and browsers that we can play with. So it's really useful for us to, if we want to run um, our checks across different types of browsers, um, we can, I mean, with, within the context of what we're doing right now, we're gonna, we can configure our scripts to connect to source labs um, using our sort of login details. And then what we can do is uh, run the script against a browser of our choice, it'll run it, um, record some details, and then tell us whether or not it's passed or failed locally, which is quite cool. Yeah, Source Labs officially call themselves a continuous testing cloud. Um, obviously, all that's, you know, trendy buzzwords in there. But as Mark said, for me, it's browsers in the cloud. It replaces my local instance as well as things like um, Selenium Grid. Mm -hmm. And it is basically a Selenium Grid in the cloud. But it does remove all that need to maintain your own grid, different browser versions and everything like that. So if you are really needing to do extensive cross-browser testing, a cloud such as Source Labs is probably a must for you to stop you pulling out all your hair, trying to manage your own um, browser instance. And I tried that for a while. I was only trying to keep a few versions of Firefox and Chrome and the amount of things that, you know, auto-updates drove me mad. The amount of time Firefox would auto-update um, I remember, and then I've lost the previous version. I remember having to wait two days to, so auto update was turned off for me, but um, WebDriver had bumped and our instance of Firefox hadn't, and it took me two days um, and three different ops tickets. Um, and I think at the end, I, it was easier for me to just access, get shell access and just update it myself rather than um, rather than wait for them to do it. <laughs> But I've also been told, uh, and again, it's been a while since I've used it, but there's a lot of nice things that we can look at once we have our actual test executed in the cloud. So I think let's try and get it running and then have a look at that afterwards. Yep. So we're going to look at the automated tests section. Um, uh, so the live tests panel here and the automated builds, not necessarily stuff that I've done a lot of work with. Live test stuff is quite handy for exploratory testing um, or just basically testing your, your app. Um, but rather than having automated checks drive it, you'd drive it yourself. Not so sure about the automated build stuff. Um, I'll have to have a look at that at some point. Not sure. We'll have a quick around. We can definitely demo the live tests. We'll have a look at that afterwards. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm not, not entirely sure about the builds myself. It's not something I've come across. Yeah. So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to grab some code from the RESTful Booker sort of platform stuff. Um, as we I'm going to tell Mark off because that ain't cheating. If you can find an example, and actually Source Labs documentation is actually quite good and got lots of different language examples. So 
copying someone else's code isn't cheating. No. Just invest the time to explore it. So can you tell me what all that does? Yep. And, and then I'll let you off if you... I'll and then to, and to be you fair, actually, this is copied from the source documents. <laughs> um, so there we go. So what we're doing here is... Um, oh, yeah, we need to remove those two, don't we? That's for another stream, folks. Um, yeah, what we're doing here is uh, we're setting a bunch of capabilities for our driver object to configure it to set. Well, here we're going to set what platform and what version of browser we want to run. So as you can see, we're using Chrome options. And because I'm setting it as Chrome options, it's going to tell Source Labs to basically run an instance of Chrome on Windows 10 using version 77. Um, and then I also need to add some uh, what I've called source caps here, but sort of source lab specific capabilities. So I need to set a username, um, which I'm just rather than. So a good practice is to do it environmentally driven. So the idea being is if, if you ran this across different uh, different CI builds or different uh, laptops and stuff like that you can actually use your own credentials and just all you need to do is change your environmental variables rather than go in and change your code plus it's also not not the best idea to store access keys in your code um, that said I'm gonna live stream my access key <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we checked out beforehand that it's quite easy to generate a new one we yeah. hope if yeah. not, we'll be a support ticket straight into our source labs. Help us out. Our key is live on the grid. I mean, there's a big, big ass red button that says regenerate key. So that should do yeah, the job. Fingers crossed. That will break Circle CI, but we'll deal with that. Okay. So, yeah, I've gone into user settings and I've grabbed my access key from in there. Drop that in here. Um, I'm going to change the name of this. So, this is just the name of the test. So, let's just call it AIT home site. AIT homepage. <laughs> and another thing I think I do need to change is that we're not using Chrome driver. We're going to use the remote driver. So I'm going to go back to my previous code. Um, yeah, so we need a remote web driver, which means actually we don't need to use the web driver manager. So we'll do that. Um, do, 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 do with the new URL and Chrome options, because I need to also, something else I've just realized I've missed. So the URL up here. So while Mark does that, I'll briefly explain some Selenium stuff. So obviously Chrome, Firefox, Edge, et cetera, they're all named after the browser. The remote web driver is a specific instance of the driver designed, funny enough, to be run remotely. So instead of sending all its instructions to the local Chrome driver server running or the local web driver server running, it sends them obviously across the internet and or across a local network to wherever you've set up your, um, your nodes. So like I said, it's a lot of this is based on Selenium grid. Um, but in this instance, our grid is the source labs, continuous cloud, continuous testing cloud. So with that in mind, I have to sort of set the URL with um, the correct details. So I've just parameterized my username and key for now. I don't need the primer, I don't want to really put those in. Um, and that should be everything I need to, to run it. So one thing it's worth saying is, is that I'm not actually touching any of the test code here. Um, all I've done is um, just modified how I'm setting up my driver object. And that's where something like, as we can see in this example, if I just make this a bit more easier to see, um, I've created like a driver of factory. So when I sort of call this create method, it's going to look at a bunch of environmental variables to see, you know, do you want me to run this on Chrome? Do you want me to run this on source? If I'm going to run it on source, I've put some like little handling in there to throw some exceptions to say, oi, you need to put proper credentials in there. Um, same with like making sure that the remote web driver is caught properly. Um, yeah, so typically you wouldn't run this sort of stuff in a before hook. You'd have this as maybe some sort of test setup or base test um, class that you'd have your test inherit. 
but I want to sort of keep everything nice and simple in here. So enough dithering. Let's uh, give this a run. Da, da, da. See what happens. So we should see nothing. <laughs> is the plan? Yeah. Um, in terms of in front of us, like you know, we shouldn't see anything open locally. Which you know, I hope is self-explanatory as in because we're sending it all using the remote web driver to the source cloud. Ooh. Yep. Success. It passed. Fantastic. So Pat on the back, Mr. Winteringham. Oh, save that for later. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, something you see here as well is like concurrent sessions. So y depending on your account, you'll have uh, a certain amount of sessions that you can run at the same time. So if, if you were trying to do things like parallelization um, with multiple driver objects or something like that, that might hit your concurrent sessions a little bit. I and mean, I think that this is shared across a team rather than the individual. But anyway, if we go back to the automated tests, uh, we can see our uh, tests at the top. Did, did you drive a quit, by the way, in your code? Oh, I did drive a close, but I didn't do drive a quit. Oops. But let's see what happens when we come here. Yeah, so what this... You can end it, yeah, so if you stop it, you can Yeah, let's do it. stop there. Job stopped. Which is quite handy, actually. Um, but yeah, I should have put driver quit in there. So yeah, this is a bit more of the details we should see. So one thing that's quite cool is you can actually watch it run. So I can watch the video. So that opened up the browser. Did a bit of resizing. Opened the page. Found it. Did an assertion. And there we go. Um, yeah, and then you can see on the right-hand side, these are all the different um, requests. And now, this is where your web driver knowledge will come in. I assume that these commands that we and the details we can see here, that stuff that's being outputted out of the remote web driver server. Yeah, so there they are basically your actual real Selenium under the hood calls. So if you go back to your script, you obviously you've, you've requested a new session, mm -hmm. uh, which is the creating of the remote instance. And then you've gone driver.navigate, which I think was the second one, mm -hmm. followed by your find element on line 49. Just seeing if I can be a bit smarter and just, uh, get rid of projects. There we go. So it's basically, yeah, it's giving you the breakdown of everything you've done. So that post session is literally create me a new session, which is your, the previous um, up here where we've got driver, remote web driver. Then you can see our next command is driver.navigate, which is that load URL. Then we have a driver.find here as the first part of our assert. And then we have this get text, which is our then our final get method. And then the close was the actual deleting of the window. Hmm. If we ran that again, I think we would see a quit. Um, so yeah, those are basically all your commands. If you had a bigger script, you could follow it through one by one. And I believe you can click on them and it will take you to that part of the video. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. So you can follow each command that WebDriver did. And obviously you can see the status codes from the grid as well. Very cool. And then we've also got some logs as well. So I assume this is much more in-depth information about those commands that were sent. Yeah, if you've ever, you know, feel like you need some interesting read for the night, you could go <laughs> and read the whole um, web driver spec. <laughs> and a lot of that is the logging and specific calls that are being made, but to be honest, I've never really had to go into that in a great um, number of detail. Yeah. But it's nice but to again, have that sometimes, stuff there, sometimes things go wrong, though. And, you know, if you're going to log any bugs against um, a Selenium project, they would really want to see all this information because it's really going to help them. Yeah. I've had some, uh, some issues in the past with um, my tests in source, uh, not because of source, but because... Um, things like using ports, unexpected ports for hosting stuff that I'm testing. So rather than doing it on like 80 or 8080, I was using 3000. 
Um, and I think a lot of this, when I ran into that problem, like a lot of this sort of stuff helped the support people when they were giving me feedback on what I needed to do. And then there's metadata as well. Oh, cool. So we can actually see some of the stuff we sent as well. Yep. And you've got this little screenshots as well, as so you could download all the individual screenshots um, that were taken throughout the, uh, the execution. I don't know if we looked across the top here, but obviously we can see the, you know, the time you ran it, how long it took browser operating system. I can't remember if you went over that bit, but yeah, that was all sort of configured yeah. in the capabilities. So we can see here we did 77 windows 10. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously you say time and all that jazz. So, you know, as simple as that, we wanted a version of Chrome. So I suggest now, Mark, what if we wanted you know, version 75. Let's give it a crack then, see what happens. So this time we're going to just change this. Got 20% of our imaginary users are using Chrome 75. So yeah, but my machine, I'm on 77 on my local machine. I'm not sure what you're on, but I'm guessing oh, you're Firefox these days, aren't I you? I am so. Firefox these days. So it's going to be we'll something that later. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be something that's pretty old. Um, yeah. But right. there we go. Changed one value and source has accepted what we asked. So let's have a look what actually did happen. How do I go back? Where's, do I have to um, go? You have to go back to your dashboard. Uh, I, think. I don't like that. <laughs> well, actually, well, let's, let's try it. Go back to the one that erred. What else can we do here? So what, what do you get if we go over here? Embed test report and issue, delete the test. Yeah, there isn't a way to go to next test by the looks of it. Yeah, that would be yeah. nice. Yeah, some way of either going to the next test or just being able to just go back to my test run. Um, mark not like click. Mark not like click. <laughs> mark, mark get angry. Mark get RSI. <laughs> the idea of me being anything remotely like the Hulk is laughable. Um, okay, cool. Oh no, it's because you, you've got the sorry context. Mark tells a story from in one in our one of our training courses about how he <laughs> hated having to scroll and click and scroll and click. So obviously, here yeah, having to do a couple of clicks is not uh, what Mark is after. But let, did that run? So let's have a look at that. Seventy five. Yep. So that ran seventy five. And, and you we... can see there, just for context, we now have that final deleting of the actual session which we never had before. So mm. that's the difference there between close and quit. Close will end, they will close the browser instance, but not the web driver instance, which Oop. we need to keep our grid clean. Oops. Ah, see, that is. That's the screenshot. It's just like a little icon on the right hand side. Ah, let's see. Ah, cool. That's quite shiny as well. Um, should we try this? What happens if we change it from can Windows we, to Can you Mac? watch that back for me? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so the resolution's interesting there. Now, I haven't used um, source external extensively, like I said. I wonder if we can control that. Uh, source Labs change because that's got the that's basically on the medium view because i coded that page and that's three columns not mm -hmm. not um six test configuration options let's have a look in here i feel like that ain't full screen platform version version app your device versions let's do a quick search can we see something around uh dimension view viewport something like that yeah, view hmm. no. interesting size oh please add code this oh yeah you did a screen no, maybe specifying the screen resolution there we go got there in the end oh yeah yeah so yeah we can set a screen resolution here 
specify the screen resolution. This setting specifies which screen resolution should be used during the test session. Cool. So let's give that a go. Uh, um, I assume this is a Chrome options thing, maybe? No, no, this yeah, must be a source option. Yeah, I think this is a source option. So let's do that. See what happens when we do that. Um, okay, let's give that a run then. Yeah, I think that should be whining for six. Ah, the silence of waiting for a test to run. And there's nothing to see. We've all been there, haven't we? Oh, the anticipation. <laughs> oh, come on. It's going to work. i got to say, my heart was in my throat quite a few times when, uh, well, that's interesting, when, yeah, I, the when I run those tests. Oh, uh, dashboard. Oh, many tests. Rah, too much clicking. Okay, so if we go here. <laughs> Screenshot was... There you go. Oh, that, yeah, that's better. It just took a little while to load. I yeah, imagine... I don't think it's fully loaded. I don't think it's fully loaded there, is it? Do we have more than... I think we've got six of them. Uh, yeah, there's six. There's missing blog on that. Oh, there we go. It's just cut off. Yeah. I see cool. That's, that's, that's cool. A, another thing worth maybe mentioning is uh, full screen. Snapshots oh, yeah, so that's, so that's still that's still down there. You see blogs is halfway down still. Hmm. Uh, what's my current bigger screen? resolution? <laughs> no, it's all right. Screen resolution. Let's have a look. Or oh, resolutio. Resolutio. Oh, I can't be asked with that. Oh, there we go. I thought that was let's do that. Sixteen eighty by ten is it ten fifty? Ten fifty randomly, yeah. Well wow, it's a MacBook. Different sort of view. Okay, let's give that a go. Wait for that. It's quite nice as well. Uh, just to make this clear, well. this has got nothing to do with like <laughs> source tabs really. The fact we can control it is great. I think if we ran it locally and it didn't maximize window, we might have the same issue. Hmm. So yeah, we're not. I know we're not calling maximize window. Yeah. But this is just my curiosity. There now. you go. Yeah, yep. there we go. Well, that's, <laughs> it's quite funky though that you can change the uh, the sizes because that's quite handy for responsive as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, as we have just demonstrated that our site is responsive. Thanks to, to some them. degree. To, to, to... <laughs> Five it's, along the top and one below is not that great, is it? It, it is responsive, uh, but you know it's <laughs> it's it's pushing pushing the, uh, the definition a little bit, but it is responsive. Cool. All right. All right. So, what about a different browser, Mark? Yes. Because we've we've had Chrome there, different sizes, and also maybe operating system because we're, we're sticking on the Windows there. Yeah. So let's so give it Windows Chrome. Can Chrome. we do Firefox Mac? Firefox, Mac, sorry. Yeah, Fire so... Mac. It's merging the two worlds there. <laughs> I know what you mean. Which is worrying. <laughs> I know what you mean. Regardless. Fire Mac. What is Fire Mac? Fire Mac. He means Firefox on a Mac. That usually means that he wants to throw my Mac out of the window. Um, okay, so I think there's probably different ways in which you can do this with Source, but the way that I've sort of picked up and kept with for now is um, just by changing the object to Fire op uh, Firefox options rather than Chrome options. Um, and then I've just done a bit of a refactor just to make sure that, uh, you know, it'd look weird if it said Firefox options and the variable was actually called Chrome options. So that should actually be enough for us to change browser, although we should probably change the browser yeah, I'm not, version. I don't know if there is a version 75 of uh No, and Firefox. so oh, that's the Selenium version. Firefox isn't as good, right? So I imagine it's probably only on like version 12 or something. Uh, I would I would argue the other way. The lower release numbers <laughs> means less bug fixes. <laughs> but there we go. Uh, context, Mark. Mark 
started getting concerned about his privacy and uh, shifted over to the the land of Firefox. But I believe you're having a quite a good time. Yeah, no, it's I, I really like it. The experience with Firefox is uh, a lot better than it was like than a few years back. Um, it was a bit weird to begin with, but I've actually sort of kind of got used to it now, which is nice. Okay, so change the browser version. So the last thing is we need to change the platform. Um, so let's go for... Well, that's valid though, because it shows, you know, it shows the need for cross-browser stuff. Like, you know, me and you are, you know, pretty similar in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, I'm Chrome, you're Firefox. Mm. And, you know, obviously there's, there's other options out there. So, you know, there is risks around your web applications and different browser versions. So yeah, you do need to factor that in. Yeah, and it's, it's good for, like, testing our stuff as well, because we're always looking at it from different perspectives and, and there are, you know, there are still differences. Um, I get moaned at every time we do our training cause you can't hit enter on our login. Um, but I can't do that because there's a bug in Chrome that screws up the pathing um, and it's not getting fixed anytime soon. Anyway. So I missed something seven. then. So go back to where you copied that from. Uh, cause... from here. That's interesting. I don't know if that's necessarily right because obviously this is in the specifying resolution. Maybe I should actually. Yeah, I'm not sure it is because what did it say before? It said Windows Space 10. No, it probably is right. I, yeah. Actually, you know what? That, that's my brain telling me. Last time I used this, I remember having to specify both. So the fact that you're um, able to do that is yeah. um, that makes it a lot nicer to have. Yeah. Yeah, Mac. Oh, OS. Mac OS. Uh... Okay, so let's. So you've got OS X. Yeah, so let's change that. Yeah, that I think that was a good call to just challenge that. It's a classic copy and paste, um, <laughs> blindly see what happens sort of thing. Right, let's give this a go. While we wait for that to run, um, we should say the. Oh, uh, oh that did not run well. So let's have a look like at that. that. So that's quite so nice Matt, as well. Point three. Version 65, device unspecified. Well, you can't have that resolution for Firefox. Um, well, in that case, well, I imagine that's probably more the operating system itself. Setting that. That's really nice, though. I like the fact that it actually tells me, you know, it's, yeah, gi it's giving me an indicator helpful. of what's um, what's right and what's not. So Attempt number two. Oh, a bit, bit further there. Yep. Seems a bit happier. No, computer says no. Or source well, while I was, well, what I was going to say is me and Mark are using a piece of software called Use Together um, so that we compare, even though I'm not doing anything at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but usually we take turns and we, uh, we take you know ownership of who's typing and who's not. But it allows us to often jump in every now and again when one of us has missed something obvious or uh, fix a typo and stuff like that. It makes it a bit more fun. And it's also a subtle hint from Richard that he wants to play. Uh, <laughs> Not <stuff> quite. To... <laughs> All right, so let's see. So that looks so good. Mac 1013, Firefox 65. Nice. So there we go. Firefox is opened. Set screen, Full screen. screen. Lovely. Beautiful. Nice. I like the little robot on Firefox to say that this is being controlled via automation. Yeah, yeah that's quite cool. I think, I think Chrome has something similar. I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to have um, I've got another scenario for you, Mark. All right, then. I've heard rumours that... I deny all accusations. This... this uh, there's something about a browser called Edge by Microsoft, apparently, or something to do with Windows. Never heard of it. I, I've never, I only, I literally heard about it a few days ago. I <laughs> didn't think those things existed anymore, All right. I've got to tell you. All right. Joking aside, you're really putting me on my spot here because I don't actually know how to do that. I assume <laughs> it's just Edge options, but let's see what happens. There we go, there's Edge options. Oh, thank God. That's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I have no idea if this will work or not, because I've never, ever run anything in, in IE or Edge at all. Um, it's quite an interesting thing here. Can I just type for a sec? Sure. One 
thing. <coughs> so I'm trying to remember what the actual underlying options is. Yeah, options. So I think you could just use options. Or oh, one of them. And then maybe set then a capability. Because you're not using anything specific to either of those drivers. Let's see. But I can't remember what the exact object is. Yeah. But anyway, for now, you can carry on as we are. But... I mean, you've got that right there, haven't you? Browser name. So, yeah, I could probably make this a bit more generic. Well, let's let's do the edge thing first and then uh, yep. see what happens. Let's see if we can refactor it to be a bit... Uh, version number? 65? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know That's any That's a lot version? of releases in a few days now. Yeah. Do you know any? <laughs> yeah. I actually don't. Let's have a look at edge version numbers. Uh, edge on Windows, 44. All right, 44. Let's give that a whirl. Uh, I like the fact that we're, we're doing something with WebDriver and on source, and in our chat, someone's just given some love for rest assured. Um, <laughs> 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 That's, uh, I, I wholeheartedly agree, and the more I spend time doing stuff on the UI, I miss rest assured. Okay, right, so. Okay, only one resolution allowed for that. Um, oh no, that's the one we've got. That's not it. Didn't get her, didn't get her stack trace this time or some info. Basically a combo, so. Oh, the stream title still. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we forgot to update our stream title, so it's still going on about rest assured. We, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Can I change that? Manage stream exploring source apps. So, um, all right, we failed on Edge, so we tried. We tried Edge, Edge options. Windows 10 version 44. There we go. Oh, I'm gonna Updated the chat. So it now it says actually exploring source labs. Okay, so whatever I Googled is nonsense, Mark. So try Edge version 18. Well, actually, I can type it. Let's try version Edge 18. Oh, you're too quick for me. Little lag over the interwebs there. <laughs> <clears throat> Maybe there's something else not quite right. Don't know. Uh, hmm. I'll tell you what, let's just comment out the screen resolution because we've already explored that. Let's see if that's the case. Uh, nope. Oh, what? 18 point. Oh, maybe we need to do another point there. Like, because I can see. Oh, like, maybe just maybe just 18. Should we give it? Yeah, let's do it. Just do 18. Oh, longer. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. So what did we have for, what did we use for Firefox and Chrome? Because my, I can't remember that far back. <laughs> Ten minutes. 77 for Chrome. I think 60 something, but I, I'm using an older version. So 65, but I'm using an older version of Firefox. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's 65 is definitely not the latest. Um, well, that's happy now. So fingers crossed, we got some edge on the go. So some sweet, sweet edge. That, you, you, no, we're doing this for our friend Dan Ashby, right? Yeah. Windows fanboy. Yeah. Always gone about Microsoft. Yeah, we haven't forgot you, Dan. Uh, cool. Let's give that a crack. Excellent. <clears throat> and again, you know, I'm not have not really delved into the world of Edge, but I don't know if it's something ah, that works. On... <laughs> Look at the beautiful design of that. It's basically Chrome with a different skin these days. Yeah. Cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, that's nice and shiny. Do you want to do that quick refactor just to make it, you know, not to have to yeah. specify? Yeah, let's or make. Shall we? Yeah, let's make this a little bit nicer. So now that I, because that's not something I'd really considered. Do I have to have it say that? Let's see if I just. 
I'm not entirely sure if that is the right object, but I know there is obviously there is one somewhere. Well, that's an interface. Yeah. So I don't think that that is right. Hmm. Yeah. So I think. Oh, I thought, oh, I, thought well. I thought, I thought, um, uh, Internex, I thought Edge had already adopted Chromium, uh, but it's in their dev stream version now. Are you getting inside information on the Twitch website? I am getting inside. Oh, yeah, information. Twitch need to do some cross-browser testing because they don't let me see any of this. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm joint owner of that account, yes. I'm not allowed to see any of it. Okay, cool. Um, um, so there was one thing I'd quite like to have a little play with, um, which I noticed down here. Not this one, though. Might have to move back to Chrome. But one of our earlier tests, uh, that one. Yeah, we've got a little nice little tab down here. Yeah, but we've not enabled that. But we could do the, the, the networking one, I think. So let's see what happens if we do this. Capturing. Yep. What are you expecting to happen out of curiosity? So I'm expecting to see stuff out of the network tab from DevTools and maybe stuff from the console tab as well. So let's give that a crack -a lack I think I need to change this back to Chrome. I was going to say, you're going to have to go back to Chrome. Chrome options. What did we say? It was 77. And let's just refactor that to Chrome. And I think this is one of the features... I'm not entirely sure, but I remember, funny enough, chatting to people at Source, uh, Selenium Conf um, last week, that I think Source Labs are one of the few who've actually enabled this. I think, I believe it's called Chrome DevTools Protocol, hmm. uh, which they've managed to build some stuff on top of, such as this hopefully network tab we can have a quick look at, but also something called Source Performance, which hopefully we'll get to look around and play with in a, in a future stream. Yes, yeah. Um, let's give that a crack there. Yeah. Yeah. One of the talks at CConf was, um, oh, I've probably said something wrong here. Um, it's resolution again, I think. Oh, yep. Yeah. Let's just comment that out because we don't care about that. Um, yeah. One of the talks was showing how, um, they'd create some tests and, uh, got them working with dev tools to do some interesting stuff. So they were like mocking all of the images, um, so that rather than showing the actual main images, you've got mocked images instead, or stubbed images, which was quite cool. As I joked when I saw you on Monday, I'm waiting for the first person to start trying to extract and assert status codes using the protocol, <laughs> which is going to... We're not allowed to talk about that, Mark. That's... <laughs> That's going to be a so status. So joking about joking aside about the rest assured thing in a minute ago, right? You want to do status codes, stick to rest assured. Yep. Or tools like it. Stay yep. away from protocol debugging stuff and everything else. Yes. So did that work? Oh, we got a we got a spinny. Check Ooh, it. Good. Check it. Look at how many requests we have to build our page. <laughs> no wonder it's so. Some of images and that. They're... It's all those icons I am. Oh, I yeah. fell in love with icons and went icon crazy. Yes. It's only one point two meg though. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's all right. Most those most of those are the sponsor images, <laughs> right? Yeah. Look. Oh, MOT logo is a bit bit large. We could get that down a bit. Yep. jQuery is a bit a bit chunky there. Yep. Yeah. Nothing, nothing huge. That one's a big one. Nedgeable though. Nedgeable. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Quite. There's certain words I just cannot say anymore. Especially when probably you're... I say anymore, I'm never going to be able to say them. <laughs> All right. Well, that's interesting. So, what uh, happens if you click on the performance tab, Matt? I don't really know at the moment. Yeah. This feature is only. Oh. Next time. Next time. Next time. We shall, do... we shall contact the sales team. And, uh, I think we take on a bit of a challenge, Mark. Go on then. What about, what about mobile safari? Ooh. I haven't done it, but I'm, I know it's possible. I've not either, so let's go and search for the word mobile. 
So well, I can see on the left there, you've got getting started with Selenium for automated. Oh no, that's web. Uh, oh yeah, there you go. Browser name. Okay, so we need an Appium version. That makes sense. Oh. Appium being the mobile, uh, the mobile version of Selenium. So okay, we are completely outside of my wheelhouse now. Uh, let's. Yeah, so, me too. <laughs> so what? So we just drop this in. Here. So I think you replace that where you've got your Selenium one because obviously we don't need that anymore. And then we want to set. So let's go with one. Well, let's let's. Hmm. So I guess the thing that's gonna th which is a sticking point for me is that because obviously we're using options at the moment but when we're, we're not doing that anymore um, I feel like well let's let's check out source labs documentation yeah, that's why I feel like mm. it's the the right thing to do I'm sure there'll be an example somewhere mobile Safari or Chrome. Oh, I found something really snazzy. I'm on a different computer. So can you, oh, there it is, that one there, this platform configurator. Yes, which, was, on that. which was mentioned to me on the stream. Ooh, shiny. But I, uh... yep, thank you. Yep. <laughs> we got there at the same time. So it was, oh, this, this was mentioned yes. in the chat earlier, but I didn't really understand what was meant by the platform configurator. So I, you know, I did the uh, the manly thing and I ignored it. Um, okay, let's just go for that then. Ooh, iPad. Oh, it's a lot of options, isn't it? Oh, yeah. right, scrolling far too far. Find the latest iPhone for me, Matt, because. I can't seem to scroll that list too well. <laughs> it keeps keeps going past it. I would assume it's this. Yes. Ten. Yeah. Yeah, that'll do. Operating system twelve, because no one wants to touch thirteen at the moment. Apple version. <laughs> that one. Yep. Yeah. I'm not not too sure. Yeah, web testing. That makes sense. Yeah. So we just oh, do that. that. That's very funky. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely bookmarking that for later. Um, that goes in AIT for now on. Uh, so, what are we just. Um, so, we're just creating some design. Tidy it all up, yeah. Let's, yeah. We don't really what? need the um, Chrome options. Yeah, let's comment all this shiz out. You basically just need a capability object and just put that straight into the remote web driver. Yep. So that. Yeah. I think that's going to work. And then change Chrome options to caps. Caps. I could type it myself, but you know, might be in the driver. Yeah, I think that's it. Yep. Cool. Let's give that a crack, see what happens. Da, da, da. That's terribly exciting. Takes me back to my mobile days. It's been a few years since I got to tinker on mobile stuff. This is this is the first ever automated mobile testing I've ever done. So I think I think, <laughs> I think I'm an expert now, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. Like you, I'll certify you. I'll send you the handmade certificate later. Okay, lovely. <laughs> oh, come on. But yeah, that thing that we're on, if you let, let's just flip back while that runs to that configurator. Because I think it gives us insight as well. Like I said, I've not um, had extensive use, but clearly look, look at all these options that we can have. Mm. And as we said earlier, imagine trying to configure all this yourself. Like if you were really into, well, not really into it, if you had the risks out there in your application that mandated the need to have all these cross-browser testing, 
I, I can't even imagine maintaining a grid like this. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, you, you, you're just spending all your time maintaining a grid. Okay. That passed. And it's this kind of thing that, sure, you know, it's the Source Labs continuous testing crowd isn't free, but when you factor in all that time it would take you to maintain your own, that's probably a massively good investment. Yeah. Well, this is um, this is obviously what we talk about quite a lot, don't we, in AIT, about the whole, the cost of trying to hire someone and get them to do the work for you versus sometimes buying off the shelf tools. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. And if, I, if I was after one or two, I probably, you know, I probably might potentially still try and, you know, control my own. If I was literally Firefox and Chrome and latest. Hmm. Um, unnamed job. Oh, it's because I... Oh, that because we got rid of the... Yeah, we can put yeah. that back in. Well, I think that's a good one for Source to put on that page because we don't want unnamed jobs, do we? So mm, if, they yeah. left that, if they left that in there, that'd probably be helpful for people. Yeah. Because what would be quite fancy, actually, as well, is if you could put a name and then you could save it to that name, come back to this yeah. or something like that. Yeah, a little that. field at the top could give it a name. Yeah. yeah like, like store, can you change, store the name, you change the name after the run mark? Uh, let's can, give you, it, can you change that name? Give it a crack. Um... No, nothing jumps out massively. Okay, let's give this a crack. Anyway, anyway, let's have a watch. Let's see what happened. I have no idea how this looks on mobile. Well, we went for a simulator, so I think we should just see the simulator pop up like you would on your local machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Cool. Should we try an actual mobile device next? Or does that? We can. Um... Or does that? Because I saw some mention of like test object. Well, well, that's low, well right? Source Labs bought them, so I'm just wondering if it's slightly different configuration, maybe. Um, but I'm, again, I'm not entirely, not entirely sure. Let's have a look. But I'm happy to have a have a click around. Do, 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 do real device choosing public devices. Data centers. Oh, so you just set the platform name to IOS. So if I set the plat, oh no, it's already there. We did that already. Uh, but we have to do IOS driver. Uh, okay. Um, let's see if we can get away with that. Oh, that's. I don't really know why I was watching that. There we go. Because we could. That works. Look at that. Beautifully works on mobile. Took loads of effort designing that. Let's browse. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful. It does look fantastic. Right, then. Oh. Let's try this. Let's try this real device. As far as I know, we should have access to do this, but I've never done it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm on the new I'm on the uh, the new things as you. So. I so that create URL should be the same as the the uh, new URL there. Yep. So let's change some bits here. So first of all, um, yep, like you said, new URL equals URL. Capital oh, URL. Oh, thing. someone someone shared us. So you, apparently you can update the name. Um, job methods update jobs. Oh, right, yes. So you can you can update um, test names after that. Right, so I need to change this to IOS drive, IOS driver, I assume. So the question is, is what library do I need for that? You're going to need Appium. So I can just go on to... You're going to have to add Appium to your Maven project. Appium, Maven, Maven, Maven. You, you, I'm not sure you do. Oh, I don't know. Oh, God, it's been so long. <laughs> I assume it's just the Java client I need. Definitely not the manager. Yeah, you need Appium. Yeah, of course you do. Being silly. You don't need it. You're not going to do it standalone. That would be madness. So. Cool. So let's drop that into my Palm XML. Enable auto import. There you go. It's bet slightly differently underlined now. Mm -hmm. Should we import class? Hey! 
<gasps> dun, dun, dun. All right then. Let's see. Let's see if I am now <laughs> truly a mobile automator. Well, once you've branched into the world of real devices, you've made it, right? Yep. Actually, now thinking back to my mobile journey, I, I started on real devices. I had real issues on my um, Mac early on with Xcode and simulator just weren't my, we were just weren't friends. Mm. I did, Whereas if I plugged in a real device, it was really happy. I did some exploratory testing with the simulators and um, I did a lot of exploratory testing of the BBC homepage across some devices, but I never did it in an automated capacity. Go back to the docs a bit, because I know the way me and you work, right? We're both a bit, a bit quick with we do, how we do stuff, but like you quicked through that really quickly. Yeah. Because obviously that configurator didn't give us, you know, for some reason, didn't give us that. Yeah. And then we ended up on a different page, the one before. And so we ended up on this page. Yep. Is that where we ended up straight? That was where we, we ended up. Yeah. yeah. And what did you click on? So I just scrolled down and saw related topics and then i think this just popped out to me because it was like it's the first thing in, in this list so typically you know in okay. faqs the first thing's gonna be there then when i got onto here actually it's an interesting heuristic that i've never really considered but i just looked for code so i was just like where's some code mm -hmm. oh there's some code and then because obviously we've been doing a bit around the desired capabilities for the last hour i've obviously got quite a strong oracle to to, to look for that sort of stuff so yeah we looked at the ios platform bit saw that was the same so I realized that's when ios driver popped out to me i'm glad so you you're basically always... saying no one should write words just write code well no words i, I think probably <laughs> what i would end up doing is if i ran that and then it failed then i would probably start moving back up and having a little look see i see so Got complete. Yay. And now I'd expect the video to basically be what you would get if you used something like QuickTime when you connect it to your your Mac. So let's go there. Let's the simulator. The simulator. Unless that's how they demo show it to us. Oh no, it still says Mac ten fourteen. Maybe uh maybe I need to remove Oh, yeah, maybe. Mm. Oh, device name. Ah. It says simulator. Can I just do that? Let's see what happens when we do that. Sometimes you just got to delete code and run it. Well, <laughs> it, it didn't explode on me. It didn't. So let's see what happens. And we can actually see uh, tests um yeah that's ones. true yeah you can see them so we still got 12.2 on the side there 10.14 yeah still using a simulator mm, not quite there not quite there the code didn't tell me everything do you need any of the you know there is no desired capabilities uh, really yeah, apart it's from it's true so maybe we just we need just, yeah so delete all of them that, apart from that maybe that keep the name because we've learned from that and that's been defined by yeah by, mm, by yeah that. just get rid of that let's right. keep it simple we can add back in just let this finish <gasps> off why don't you stop it uh, i just stop it see what see what happens to the cloud i just so what, what do you get left with in source if you stop one i think it'll probably look very much like that one that we left before yeah so it's just this is just stays in progress. Yeah, and then we can stop it. Stop that one. Yeah. Job stopped. Nice. So is that the new one? Mm -hmm. It can't be because it still says twelve point two. Hmm. six as well. Yeah. Uh, something not quite right still. Oh, the desired cape B. 
abilities are slightly um, so the caps here are just get rid of the iPhone bit but yeah just call that caps stop that give one more run if this doesn't work we might have to call it there oh it just didn't like that at all <laughs> it's just like, what are you doing, Mark? I feel like it needs to be told, like Safari and stuff. But I just because we're not using, we're not trying to do. We're actually trying to test Safari, not an app. So what if you tell it Safari? So yes, yeah, so we're saying open it up on iOS, but we want the browser. So again, that didn't blow up. God, look how many capabilities we've got left commented out. So let's just kill that one first. And load this bad boy up. Still saying, yeah, still saying Mac 10, 13. No. Oh, well, something to potentially play around with at another time. Yep. Yeah, I'll just um, have to, I'll just have to accept the fact that I'm not a mobile automator extraordinaire. Um, and we'll reach out to source. I'm sure they can show us some stuff. Cool. Well, I learned some new bits around Source Labs and I tend to, so the way that we use it with um, RESTful Booker platform is we tend to use it because because I'm using Circle CI, um, everything's run off Docker images. So rather than trying to sort of wrangle with a Docker image that has like an instance of a browser in it, but I have to run the browser headlessly and use things like is it XVFD or whatever it's called. Um, I can just defer the actual running of the tests in source and then just get the feedback sent back to my CI box um, to process. So it's um, yeah, can, very useful that. Can we just check one more thing, Mark? Sure. I remember you being on um, Source Lab's GitHub page a minute ago. Is there any code we can steal from there? The art of Google. Um, let's have a look at this. Aren't you? Um, simple source. Maybe have a look for Safari. Maybe. Yeah, let's just go find and find a repository. How can I just do? So and that's the that's the actual code that launches Safari. <laughs> you don't want that. Safari. Oops, Safari. No. Oh well, it was worth a quick try. Oh, that's a good point. Someone's uh, just suggested that um, that we might need to set a different URL. Um. Oh, it did have a different URL. They are correct. Go back to that original doc. It did have a different URL so... for the. Uh, that. Yeah, but that's just that's that's the location of. Oh, thank you for telling me to update Slack right now. Um, I think that's just pointing to which of the cloud servers that I want to use. So that's just saying specifically use US West. Um, we're on that anyway. Could, yeah, but I could modify it to like Europe or uh, I can't remember what the other one was. Oh. was East Coast or something like that. Um, just because you know, I think we've got to complete the job because we know we've we've identified that we wanted to do it. So let's go ahead and do it. Um, see if we can grab 
a real device from here and we wanted iOS. No, no, we can't because our trial period has ended. Oh, oh. no, oh, oh, no, but we can use a free one. That's cool. Yes. Let's use this one. Start session. Ooh, shiny. Session could not be oh. tested. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. We're just not destined to test mobile devices. We're Perhaps not. that's what it is. Perhaps we just simply don't have an account that's allowed real devices. Well, that yeah, maybe. And it's trying to push us into emulators or something like that. Anyway, that's a good thing to actually chat about. You know, I don't, I've not done enough recently, but we we did used to find a lot more issues on the real device. But when we won the real device, it was more from a, you know actually having it in your hand and using it. Mm. with regards to functionality we didn't have too many issues with simulators and emulators but if i was going to do it these days i would probably want to have a combination maybe use some uh, maybe do some of the execution on simulators and some of it based on real devices yeah but you know what you know there's, there's clearly a lot more there that we need to play around with uh, um, you know, the browser stuff worked flawlessly. I think we just got a bit ahead of ourselves with the mobile stuff. <laughs> um, but in terms of, you know, the actual cross browser thing that we set out to do at the beginning, we were able to do that pretty seamlessly. Yep. And like get some additional bits and pieces like that debugging stuff is quite cool. I quite like that. And, um, all the extra logs and stuff. Yeah. Like spending a bit more time in the dashboard rather than sort of using source um, more from a how do I get it to run in CI perspective. That was quite that's quite cool. Yep. Awesome. Nice one. All right then. Well, I'm not sure when we're going to do another one of these for at least the next three or four weeks because me and Mark are off to Australia and New Zealand to do some training. Yep, it's going to be exciting. Yeah. Get away from all this grey rainy weather in the UK. That's, that's going to be good. So I think probably mid-November will be the chance we'll get to do one. We maybe, you know, we can try and do one in Australia time. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Let's, let's wait and see how we're feeling because, uh, you know, jet lag and back-to-back -back training. <laughs> Might just want to chill. <laughs> it's just an hour of you and me trying to log into a site. <laughs> yeah. Failing miserably. Uh... All right. Well, um, you know, thank you to Source for giving us the opportunity to have a look around on there. Yep. And um, we hope to do a few more of that. Um and yeah, cheers for cheers for guiding us most of that way, Mark. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's good fun. All right. Um we will upload this to YouTube along with all the other ones that are on there as well. Uh do check out the automation testing website. And as we mentioned, there's lots of stuff earlier on lots of stuff on here. Myself and Mark do training. There's some text based online courses. And the RESTful Booker platform that we mentioned for you know practicing your automation, as well as going through this code base, we have lots of example checks in this code base using all sorts of different tools that are out there. Uh, and yeah, maybe give us a scroll to the very bottom of it. Well, hello, us. give us a follow on one of these platforms if you're um, if you're interested in you know keeping it on track. So what me and Mark are up to? Yep. Or um, if you want to subscribe to our channel. Um, you can get us on AIT online on YouTube and you can get access to all our videos from there. Excellent. Cool. All right. See you, everyone. Bye. See ya. Bye.